Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'd like to discuss the power bank adapter that's available for the Mavic Pro battery. Now I did a clip a couple of weeks ago talking about how this magical little box can convert a Mavic battery into a portable power bank when you're out in the field. It allows you to take the 11 volts that's available in one of the batteries you have with you and convert it to the 5 volts you need to charge USB devices. And there are two full-size USB connections on here so you can charge whatever you happen to have with you that needs recharging, a phone, a tablet, maybe a controller. And I use this thing an awful lot in the field. Typically when I'm flying for an afternoon and it's getting late in the day, my phone's getting a little low on juice and I need to charge it up, I'll use this on a battery that's partially depleted. I'll power up the battery. Once that battery powers up, this box takes responsibility of converting that power to the right voltage for the device I'm connecting to it, and it starts charging that device. So everything is great. And I use it a lot, like I said. I started thinking the other day, how much do I really know about this device? I mean, I'm trusting that DJI did a good job in the engineering to build this little converter, but I've had a lot of experience with car chargers and wall chargers, and there's a lot of ways that you can make a charger incredibly cheap that isn't that great a quality. And I'm connecting some really expensive electronics up to this, trusting that it's delivering five volts at clean power at the right current. It's got some kind of protection in for over voltage and over current. And this is a tiny little box that costs about 20 bucks. And then my engineering kicked in and I said, I can't sleep until I get inside this thing and see what's going on. So I had to tear it apart. And that's exactly what I did. And I'll show you what I found in a few minutes. But before I got into it, I've had a lot of respect for DJI. I've torn a lot of their products apart. I've looked at it from an engineer's perspective. If I were to do that, would I make the same decisions they made based on all my experience in the engineering field? Did they cut a corner? Did they try something that's a little less than standard practice? And I've not been disappointed up to this point, but again, this thing is glued shut. So the engineers that put this together, and I guarantee you there were a team of people that worked on this, could have taken some shortcuts and you and I would never have known because converting DC power to DC power is not an easy thing to do, and there are a lot of shortcuts you can use. And if you've ever bought a cheap car charger, uh, you know what I'm talking about. If you hold it and it gets warm, they've taken a shortcut to do that conversion from 12 volts down to the five volts for the USB connection, and you're probably gonna damage your device by keeping it connected to it any length of time. So I thought, I like these guys, I trust these guys, but I'm tearing this thing open to get inside so then the engineer and me can look at it and make an assessment of how well it was put together. So the next section, I'm gonna actually tear it apart and then the third section in this clip, I'm gonna explain what I found. So stay tuned and we'll get into it. Before I get too deep into the teardown, let's take a look at the basic components involved. For starters, we have the Mavic Pro battery. And if I flip it over and look at the specs, it's an 11.4 volt battery, which means I've got 11.4 volts here at this connector of DC power that I can use for charging. The challenge is, USB charges at five volts. So I can't just directly connect it to that or I'll have some issues with the stuff I'm trying to charge. I somehow have to convert that 11.4 volts down to the five volts available at these two standard USB connections. When I flip this over, my first clue that they did a great job with this is the fact that the output is five volts, which we'd expect of DC power with two amps per connection. Now, what that tells me is there's a couple of ways you can convert DC to DC. There's a cheap way, which will end up typically with a one amp connection on both sides, and I'll explain how that's done in a minute. Or there's a better way that actually uses what's called a switching regulator inside this unit, and there's a couple of different flavors of switching regulators. So the minute I saw that that was available at five volts, two amps, and two amps, I knew that the engineers that designed this really didn't take that cheapskate path and built it to be a very durable device. I also like the fact that from a form and function perspective, they built it to be a locking connector that's not gonna drop off easily, I can stand this up and I can charge whatever I need to charge from it. I also really like the fact that it's it's kind of a sleek design and I can slide it in my pocket and have those cables charge off the end and come out of my pocket. So it's, it's really the perfect charging device for me when I'm out in the field. And again, when I typically use this is after I've flown for a while and the battery's down to one or two dots, I'll put this on and then I'll charge my controller or my phone with it. So I thought to myself, I like the way these guys build their products and I've always been impressed by the engineering behind DJI technology, but this is the kind of thing where you can't pop this thing open easily. If you look at it, it's completely sealed. So it's either heat sealed or glued sealed once they get this thing together. So you could really, really cheat a little bit and have cheap components inside there and really taking some shortcuts from an engineering perspective. And who would know? Most people are just gonna plug this into the battery, plug in a couple of USB devices and be off and charge it. So I like to understand what's under the covers, really what makes something tick. And as an engineer, I had to get inside this because I love tearing stuff apart. So what I did was take a Dremel, 
and actually cut the sides of this to open up the bottom of the box. So it's not the prettiest because I really had to go at it a little bit with a file and a Dremel to get it open. But when I popped it open, the first thing I noticed was the board itself has three screws that hold it in. So those three screws mean they didn't just stick one screw in each corner so the board could twist or whatever. They realized when you're gonna be plugging stuff and unplugging it, you've really gotta have a secure connection to keep this thing stable so that when you're wiggling that thing, you're not gonna crack the board. So again, three connections, a nice little triangle there of connections. On top of that, you can't see it because I've removed it. They actually had caulking in the corners over the screws. Now. Again, that may seem like a minor point. Why do you need that? Can't you just screw it in and leave it there? But the problem is this is gonna get a lot of physical interaction from people plugging stuff in and unplugging it. And those screws could work themselves loose. If one of those screws popped out and slid down here, that would provide a short hazard that could cause damage to the battery. So they said, you know what? We're gonna tighten them down really tight. And I think there was actually like lock tight uh, glue on there. But on top of that, we're gonna put a dab of caulking on top of them, so there's absolutely no chance once we seal this thing up that those screws are gonna pop out. So my first impression was pretty cool, pretty cool job. So once I got those screws out and got that caulking off, I pulled the board out. The board sits in there nice and tight and actually pokes through this end. That's what makes the connections to the battery. When I pulled it out and took a look at it, that's when I realized they'd really done their homework. So if you look closely at the board, the first thing I wanna point out is, and I don't know if you can see that, Maybe if I put it up against this, you can. But if you look closely at this, the connections are not at the same level. So there are two here that are higher, two there that are higher. The rest are about at the same level. And again, from an engineering perspective, the reason those sets are higher is because that's your ground connection. Now what they wanna do is whenever they connect anything up to a battery, they want the ground to connect first because if there's any kind of static electricity built up between the two, they wanna make sure that it's grounded. So they took the extra step to not have all these level. A lot of companies, again, that are looking for a cheap and easy route will have all the connections level, you connect it up, and any static electricity could cause damage to the sensitive components here or even the battery. So the fact that they're staggered like that shows me the engineering team thought about that and said, let's raise up, which is a great standard practice in engineering, raise up those ground connections to make that connection first. So good on them for that. But then when I look closer at the board, I realized this is the better way to convert DC to DC. Now I mentioned before there's a cheap way and then there's a better way. The cheaper way to do it, and you'll find this in a lot of the car chargers you may buy that are $4.99 and you're thinking, oh man, I got a great deal on that car charger. Inside that car charger, if you crack it open with a hammer, you'll find that what they're doing to convert that 12 volts in your car, which is a little higher than the 11.4 volts here, down to the five volts you need for your USB charging device, is they have a couple of small components. One of them is called the Zener diode, which actually breaks the voltage down to the voltage you need. So in that case, it'd be like a five volt Zener diode, and then a gigantic resistor, because to take that 11 volts, you're only using five volts of it, that other six volts has to go someplace and they'll shunt that out to a resistor. Now the problem is you're wasting that energy which heats up that resistor. So if you've got a cheap car charger or even a cheap wall charger and you hold it and it's getting warm, you have the cheaper version of it that's using a Zener diode and a load resistor. The better way to do it is to use something like this which is a switching regulator. Now I'll blow this up to show you a better picture of it, but that switching regulator actually takes the DC from the battery and breaks it up into like a saw wave a sawtooth wave, and then passes it into that regulator, which breaks it down through the coil to a five volt level. And it regulates it as well. So what they're we're doing with this is one little chip is taking the input voltage of 11 volts, breaking it down to two separate streams of two amps of current at five volts. Now that converter, it's called a, a power supply or a switching mode power supply or switching regulator is a term we use a lot in the industry, can be made by a bunch of different companies. And there's companies that make those really cheap that aren't that great and then there are some that make them that are more expensive so my next investigation was to say let me get out because i'm an old guy let me get out my magnifying glass and figure out exactly what model of switching regulator they're using because that'll tell me a lot about you know are they really caring about the end user customer or are they just trying to build a cheap thing they can make a couple of bucks off now in the world of electronics that switching regulator is typically and this is going to be boring for a lot of people but it's typically a 34063 which is the cheapest switching regulator you can buy and that'll cost you less than 10 cents for that chip. This one, they're using a 5402, which is a really high-end switching regulator. It's made by a company called MPS, or Monolithic Power Systems, and those run about two bucks a pop. So why would you as a company not choose the 10 cent regulator versus the $2 regulator, right? You can buy 20 of those cheaper regulators for what that one's costing you. The reason you do that is because the cheaper regulator only gives you about an amp or an amp and a half of, of current at these two output connections, this one gives you a full two amps, it's regulated, 
It's got over voltage protection, over current protection. So again, at every turn, this company is looking at not only protecting the battery, which costs you a lot of money to buy, but also protecting the expensive electronics you're gonna connect up to this to make sure you're not gonna damage that by connecting it through this device. So as an engineer, again, at every turn, I look at what they've done inside the engineering, the quality of the board, the way it's mounted, the strain relief, and then the fact that the switching regulator is probably the most expensive one you can buy to do this kind of conversion just leads me to the conclusion that their engineering team is not cutting corners on any of these decisions. That would have been a very easy thing to fake. And again, it's, it's glued inside of something that most people aren't gonna open up. And even if they do, they're not gonna know what that thing is. So I'm here to tell you as an engineer, from my perspective, every decision they've made, look, they've got glue down here holding this component down. Every decision they've made on this converter was in favor of the end user. It wasn't in favor of the company. And that's one of the things you'll find in consumer electronics. And I peel back a lot of covers on different technologies that I look at. Consistently, I'll find companies cutting corners on the electronics in favor of profit. And I know I sound like a DJI fanboy here, but pretty much every time I've pulled something open that they've built, they've taken the high road and built the best components they can get with solid engineering, with, again, from my years of experience in engineering, taking the time to actually stagger these pins, picking the right regulator, and just building a quality product. I can't believe they make a lot of money on these things. It's a $20 item. I think the components add up together to probably half that cost, not alone the manufacturing, the distribution, the packaging. So for me, you know, it's something I use on a regular basis. I feel very good looking at this from an engineering perspective internally to know that they picked the best components they can. They put it together with a lot of a lot of care and a lot of pre-thought to build just a quality product. Okay, so the good news is it's a quality product. It delivers five volts at both of the connections at a full two amps of current, which means you can charge even those really thirsty devices like large tablets off of a standard Mavic battery and know that you're protected against things like overcurrent or over voltage or short circuits. You're also gonna protect the battery. So if you're goofy and you connect something up that's gonna cause a short, this guy's gonna step in and protect you. In addition to which, the charging circuit inside here is gonna protect you. So you've got a couple of layers of protection I spent a lot of time talking about the electronics behind it. I hope I didn't bore you with that. I find it incredibly interesting, but if I've overexplained something or I've gone on too long, I apologize. I guess the bottom line is it's an incredibly quality product for 30 bucks. And I've taken a lot of products apart in the field of drones and electronics in general. And a lot of the drone manufacturers out there, and I'm not gonna name them by name, really take a lot of shortcuts. They really build products that are kind of off the shelf, you can tell that the engineering cycles they put into it to get the product out to the street weren't really well thought out. They didn't spend a lot of time in how it was built, how it was put together, what components they chose. I've not found that to be the case with DJI, and I know I sound like a DJI fanboy, but consistently, when I peel one of their products open, whether it be a battery or a battery bank adapter or a quad, I find that pretty much at every step of the way, they've taken the high road in engineering. And I know somewhere buried in the bowels of that company, there's an engineering team that put this little adapter together that are thrilled to death that I tore it open and showed you what was inside of it because those guys tend to work, and women tend to work in dark laboratories in the basements of buildings, putting together schematics and diagrams and printed circuit boards that no one ever sees. And the fact that I was able to tear it open and show you the wonderful decisions they made to put that thing together um, just really speaks volumes of how that company cares about you as a customer. So if you have any questions about what I've talked about, uh, drop them below. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. If you need to pick one of these things up, they come with the Flymore kit, so you might have one already if you've got a Flymore kit, but they're available on the DJI website. I'll put a link below where you can go and get it. It's one accessory that I would recommend you buy. I know there's a ton of accessories on the market, but for 30 bucks to have the ability to connect up a Mavic battery and charge equipment out in the field is just a really good thing, and it eliminates the need to carry an extra battery bank with you in your kit, so I'd recommend it. Um, I'm hoping you find these clips enlightening. I spent a lot of time putting them together. I try to do clips on things I find interesting, and I'm hoping you guys are finding them interesting as well. If there are suggestions for new clips you want me to do or ways to improve the clips I'm doing, please drop them in the comments below as well. So thanks again for watching. I really enjoy putting these together, as I've said. As long as you're finding value in them, I'll continue to do them. And until next time, happy flying. Thank you.